it's not often that a scientist gets a chance to work on a project that will change the world. Um, I'm Dr. Mike Forrest. My career started back in 1957 in Harwell on the, on the early fusion devices called Zeta. And straight away, uh, my job was to be a diagnostic physicist. And to get a fusion reactor, you, you need this what you call a triple product. That's the electron temperature, the density, and confinement time. And so it's critical that we get an accurate measure of those, otherwise you're not going to progress in fusion research. One day, our division head, Dr. Bob Wilson, called me up to his office. And there's a very interesting letter here in Nature from Tom Hughes, and he's proposed using Thomson scattering to diagnose plasma temperatures and densities. Thomson scattering, this is where you scatter laser light, and this gives you a direct measurement of the temperature. S straight away, um, people realized it was important, and um, column itself, they went back to Zeta and did a scattering experiment. So this was, was the first big plasma device measuring Thomson scattering. Now this is really the height of the Cold War, in fact, the peak of the Cold War. So um, unfortunately, science got a bit dragged into it. So the Russian scientific claims were disbelieved. It just happened at that time, there was an international conference called the Pugwash Conference, which is where science, scientists from both sides of the divide, east and west, met to try and push peace forward. And, and um, Baz Pee's our director, and Artsinovich, the, Ru the Russian director, met and became very friendly. And in the event, Artsinovich asked Baz Pees if he'd send the team across to confirm their results. When we um, flew out, we didn't have any real ex expectations. And we had a you know, totally open mind on, uh, on the Russian claims. Our first impression really when we arrived it was cold because it was <laughs> snow freezing cold. It, it actually took about three, three months to prepare the equipment but with a massive effort we, we found out that there's only one plane flying to Moscow could accommodate it in its packing cases and this is Pakistan, Pakistan Airlines and they actually laid on a special flight for us. As we were settling in, the door opened and Shevranov, who was their chief theoretician, was carrying the samovar, which is a large urn device which the Russians love for brewing tea. And he said, I know you Englishmen love your tea, so I thought make you feel at home. It turned out in the end, our office became like their tea room. One of the nice things was the um, local Communist Party secretary there was uh, acting like a social secretary for us. We managed to go to the Bolshoi to see the ballet, and the Russian state circus, and, and one real privilege was to see the crown jewels and the Kremlin, which no, nobody outside the party hierarchy allowed to see. We need to know the um, background light coming from the plasma, and we had the wrong figure for that. So, so initially we had the wrong laser when we went out. But in fact, it was much worse than we had anticipated. So when we got there, we had to actually upgrade our laser. And when we did this, we actually started blowing up components. And initially, the, the, the prism that diverted the laser beam up through the machine, that just got holes blown in it. And in the interim, we had to get the components rapidly replaced. In fact, we had to use the pneumatic bag to get the bits flown out to us because you had to get them in a hurry. Mm -hmm. 
everything came together and suddenly had loud and clear scattered light signals above the background light. So once he had that, he knew that um, we'd succeeded. You had the signal on so many channels that measured the light had spread enough to give you a temperature. And then um, from that, you could tell it was exactly um, like a kilovolt temperature. I felt so relieved. <laughs> I think was, a, I think relief, relief was the, um, you know, that it worked. Something you planned had been pulled off, and um, you know, that was that was the best part. Eh? After Baz Pease uh, realised that we succeeded, he, t he telephoned the states, the, 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 both the director, and immediately the, um, they decided to convert their present experiment there to a tokamak. And, um, and within four months they had a fully operational tokamak and the whole world followed suit. And when it was time to go home we felt sad you know, because it's been such a major experience in our lives but obviously very pleased that we had a good result and that we made friends, all these Russians, and, uh, and it all worked so well together. It was just amazing, really. I think this collaboration was a unique penetration of the Iron Curtain. Sitting here, I feel quite proud because <laughs> actually the equipment here and I worked on, and this is one of the most advanced scattering experiments in the world, actually, the one on last year. I, I think if we hadn't developed the Thompson scattering, fusion would develop at a much, much slower pace. When we have the first fusion reactor, proper commercial reactor, it will be set up and diagnosed using Thompson scattering techniques we developed back in 1964 and pioneered in Russia in 69.